Okay, so when we have a pattern, typically we can fill that pattern <coughs> into an equation of this format. And let me explain what I'm drawing right here. You'll have some kind of y um, variable involved, which is your dependent variable. Dependent variable is something talked about a lot in science and math. It's something that depends on the, in this case, x value, which is the independent variable. Perhaps a, a classic example of this relationship is the day of the week, the time, or the time being independent, and then the dependent variable could be anything that relates to that day whether it's the amount of jumping jacks you're doing or the amount of miles you're running each day something that depends on how many days have passed um, what goes in this spot right here well the number that's going here in this spot will be multiplied by x and what you can put in this spot is what I like to call the rate of change or the pattern it's also often referred to as the slope so the slope or the pattern of change. Now in our case, and in this short clip, we're going to look at slopes and patterns of change that are constant. So in other words, if you're riding a bike, you would be riding 10 miles each day. You wouldn't change that. The pattern of change would be every day that passes, which is the independent variable, you would be riding 10 miles. And then you would know then what the dependent variable and result would be. There's another number usually um, plugged in here too. And it goes by a lot of names. It's referred to as the y-intercept. And as you'll see in a little bit, uh, this point when it's graphed, it'll fall right on the y-axis and it'll be a point on, on that axis. But also you can think of it kind of as a starting point. In your pattern. Where are the things starting? So this is our basic setup. And this is um, often referred to as the y equals m for this slope, x for this variable, plus a b. b is the y-intercept. So either way, this is the same idea right here. Okay, what do I mean? And how does this work? Let's go with the bike riding analogy. And let's say you are counting how many miles you put on your bike. But you realize you already put um, 150 miles on your bike. Okay, so you might see this. <clears throat> here you have maybe a column where days are passing, and every day that passes, you ride more on your bike. So, so let's set this, this table up, where we have days, and then over here we have miles. This will leave blank for our formatted equation, y equals m x plus b. So m being some pattern, b being some starting point. So on day zero, before you even start, really, how many miles do you have on your bike? Well, it depends on the story. In this case, you have 150 miles. Now, day one. Hmm. Well, let's say we're going to ride 30 miles each day. So, at the end of day one, what are the, what are the total miles <coughs> that you have on your bike? You'd have 180 miles. Day two and three. Let's go through three days of this. On day two, you're riding 30 miles each day and you have 210 miles, and then day three, you would have 240 miles on your bike. So your job is to take this information and turn it into an equation in this form. Y equals mx plus b. Now, you might not know the story or context. You might just see this right here. And the first thing you should know is that this is the starting point or starting value. Typically, especially when you see day zero here, and a number, that's your start. So we can put 150 in for our start. And looking back at our equation, that is this value right here. And we're actually halfway there. Now we're going to do plus because it's increasing. 
and let's fill in what we can. Y is the day, is the total miles. This is your Y. All right, the total miles you rode are independent, excuse me, are dependent. They depend on X, the days you've been riding. So Y is something times X plus 150. That something is what I talked about before. It's the pattern of change. And you can find the pattern of change over here in the total miles that we've written. Look at the difference between each number, and you'll notice that it's 30. And that makes sense because we've been riding 30 miles each day. So if we had to turn the information in this chart into some kind of equation, we would get y equals 30 times x plus 150. Why does this work? Well, this equation, y equals 30x plus 150, x is the day. Y is the number of miles. So if this equation is right, I can pick any day, plug it into the equation, and it'll tell me how many miles I have logged on my bicycle. So for example, um, on day one, when x is one, or our first day, we get 30 times one plus 150, and that's 180, which is exactly right. 180 when x is 1, when our day is 1. When x is 3, we'll just skip 2, we have 30 miles times the amount of days plus 150, that's 90 plus 150 is 240, and yeah, that's the number of miles you've ridden after 3 days. And you can imagine this would be useful. You can make predictions now. <clears throat> for example, you can say, if I've been doing this for 300 days, how many miles will I have written? You would do 30 times 300 plus 150. 30 times 300 is 9,000 plus 150 is 9,150. So the idea is you can use a pattern in this equation to make a prediction for any number of days. So if you are instead of dealing with a graph and you take this information and turn it into some equation that looks like a y equals mx plus b. There's a couple of easy steps we can take. First thing is you want to fill in b. Again, that's called the y intercept. This is the y axis. This is the x axis. The y intercept is a point that intercepts the y axis. So, first find that point in the line, it's right here. This is the point 0, 2. What does that mean? Well, the B value <clears throat> is the Y value. So in fact, we already know that for this equation, whatever the exact equation is, we're not sure, but we know it's Y equals MX plus 2. Because again, it's here that X is 0. It's the starting point. We call this the starting point before. And the height is 2. Now we've got to find M. That's the rate of change. Well, that means we want to find out for every one step we make on the x-axis, how far up are we going on the y-axis? And this is typically found, though, it's called delta y over delta x. That's how we find m. This sounds confusing, but let's go over some terminology. Delta, these triangles, means subtract or difference. So in other words, you go to subtract two y points and two x points. You can, only, you can pick any two points. Let's pick one that we already have, right here, 0, 2. Let's pick another easy one, like this one, 2, 4. So delta y is a y distance, it's from here to here. And you can see it's two spaces, but let's use the equation. Here's one y value, it's the 4 minus 2. So we're going to find m, 4 minus 2, over 2 minus 0. Those are the x values. 4 minus 2 is 2, 2 minus 0 is 2, and that's 1. This means that for is a 1 to 1 ratio between the y difference and the x difference. So our equation is going to be y equals 1 times x plus 2. 
This is the basic idea. You find the delta y and delta x and write them in a ratio. In this case, it happened just to be a 1. And that's your m value. So that for this graph, we have this algebraic equation. 